Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. A while ago I promised you guys that I was going to do another side-by-side -side of some of these old Robert E. Howard Conan stories. And today, that's what we're going to do. This is the big book, you'll remember, the Robert E. Howard complete collection of Conan the Barbarian. Not his other stories, just the Conan stuff. And last time we did a review and we did a side-by-side -side of Marvel's original version of the Frost Giant's Daughter. And we compared that to the Ablaze Publishing version of the Frost Giant's Daughter. And in that, I was surprised at the differences between the two and how they really differed in their interpretation of it and how each of them had their own strengths. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to take another one right here. We're going to do Rogues in the House, and we're going to compare that to issue 11 of the original Marvel Conan the Barbarian, which is in this hardcover copy. And we're going to compare that to the Dark Horse edition of this, which was in issues, what is this, 41 through 44, of the time while they held the uh, Conan license there. Just an aside, which I find rather interesting. I'm just chopping these books up here as I put them down. And can you guys see the differences in the height there? There's a difference. One's actually in one book and they're all the same size. Hmm, a little, little bit there. Either way, let's get into these ones and actually rate them. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at the differences between which one stuck truer to the original Robert E. Howard written story which one is a little more unique, and which one would probably do better with today's readers. Let's get into these. Okay, so let's get into this. So bottom line, I'll give you a good, quick synopsis of what the story is here. The story is Rogues in the House. Within this, Conan finds himself, and it's actually a fairly brief story that Robert E. Howard wrote. He's in prison. He's in prison because he killed a priest, uh, a priest who effectively betrayed a, a gunderman friend of his and had him hanged. Um, Conan's upset about this, kills the priest, and then he's betrayed by a lady friend. After that, a noble or a prince within the realm turns around and helps, makes arrangements to break him out so that he can go and kill yet another priest. Uh, in this case, though, he's trying to kill this priest because, well, this priest is trying to kill this nobleman, or has threatened to kill this nobleman. Effectively, what happens at the end of the day is Conan ends up in this priest's house. Uh, this prince ends up in this priest's house as well as other parties who are trying to assassinate this priest are in this priest's house, all trying to kill this priest, and they're all too late, well, at least to get to the party, because the priest's half-ape, half-man thing has already knocked him out and thrown him into a dungeon with a plan on killing him himself. So the reason why it's called Rogues in the House, at least as far as I'm concerned, is because there are so many rogues in one house. And at the end of the day, only the prince and Conan actually walk out of this mess, which is kind of funny. Anyways, that's the story. Fairly brief. Not a lot of detail in the original as to who the gunnerman was, who the lady was, um, who the priest was that he killed, any of that sort of stuff. Uh, and fairly brief in the description of the players, uh, because these were originally short stories that were issued out in pulps, right? So they couldn't be that long. But good story, that's what, that's what the synopsis of that is. Let's get that out of the way now. So we'll start with the Marvel. So Marvel, as you know, uh, I'm reviewing this from my original Barry Windsor Smith archives. Uh, the reason being, I like Barry Windsor Smith. So automatically, you know, I'm biased because I like the work and the artwork that went into these original stories uh, when Marvel did them. But we're being objective here. So this is issue 11 of the original Barry Windsor Smith or the original Conan run. And the story starts off with Conan in prison. As you can see, he's there being, you know, ridiculed by the jailer. And then they give you a bit of backstory. Now, Jenna is the name of the lady who betrays him in this story. Jenna is a character who's been in this particular run of Conan's stories for a couple issues, uh, and is a minor character, but she's in here. Uh, and she's the one that betrays Conan in this story. So it's interesting that Marvel already starts out with a bit of backstory to the players involved. They also spend a little bit more time talking about the priest, because in issue 10 of this series, uh, there's our priest right there, um, they've already done a story, and there's the Gundaman, by the way, They've already done a story leading up to this. So they're continuing and they've basically worked this Robert E. Howard story into an existing storyline that they're going through already, which is kind of neat. Uh, I see what they're doing and I guess they're doing that to just create continuity because as you know, it's, it's kind of difficult to get readers to continue to buy a series unless there's continuity in it. So they do that. So Jen has now developed, uh, the priest that um, Conan murdered is developed, the Gunderman is developed, on top of that, uh, the little twit that actually convinces Jenna to betray him is developed. All this stuff happens, which doesn't happen in the original story. After we leave this part, though, um, it gets really close to the original Robert E. Howard story. 
there isn't a lot in here that's really different than what was in the original short story. There's Marillo right there, who's a noble person. Um, they're going to, he makes arrangements to go kill Nabonius. Uh, Conan gets out. The first thing he does is takes Jenna and throws her into basically a giant puddle of refuse just to teach her a lesson, laughs and walks away. Uh, even though she betrayed him for money, he didn't kill her. Uh, and then he gets into the house and gets trapped. And here's Nabonius, or sorry, Marillo, who ends up in the house because he feels that the whole plan that's happened with Conan breaking out has gone awry. And there's Thak, who's this half human, half ape thing. It effectively matches. Let's just summarize here. This story matches what was actually in the original story. Um, this part here, though, a little odd, where they wrote in the part with, uh, basically, I guess they were trying to showcase Thak's strength, where he murders this leopard that's a pet of uh, Nabonius, who's a priest that they're all there to murder. That was kind of odd. Um, and really, they kept it somewhat succinct and didn't really get into the story too much of the other individual rogues who are coming into the house. They really don't, because uh, they, they skip that. Other people come into the house in the original story that are also rogues trying to kill Laponius, but they just basically cut that out. They get into the whole point of, okay, let's go kill Thak, and they're killing Thak, and away they go. At the end of it, Conan ends up making his way away. Everything's happy. Very brief in the description of Thak and where Thak came from. Very brief in uh, the betrayal by Nabonius at the end of the story. And very brief, basically, in the covering of it, because you don't have that many pages to go with. So that's the original Marvel version. Now, the Dark Horse version. Well, Dark Horse spread it over four issues. I picked these up as reader copies because I wanted to actually do this review for you guys. So here I am. Interesting, and I'll tell you right off the bat, the art in these is very different. It's more of a painted style, as you can see right here. Um, it starts off with the story being very similar, but what's within this, and this is, I find this very strange. This storyline here really follows the Marvel one quite closely. It starts off with, again, more backstory about basically the priest that Conan murdered before the story began, uh, about Jenna, about uh, the twit that convinced Jenna to betray Conan, about the Gunderman. It starts with all that backstory. Now, I haven't read the prior issues of this, and perhaps those prior issues very closely match issue 10 of Conan from Marvel. I'm going to have to pick those up at some point in time and read them, but this is where we start off with this. Again, we're starting with that level of detail. Now, and this is a thing I'm going to show you guys here because there's the Gunderman who's hung right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 12, 13, 14. How many pages we got here? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So 22 pages of comics in each book. In 22 pages of comics in each book, they spent a lot of time in this really working on depicting the picture. Less on the writing, more on the actual pictorial story as it progresses. This starts off with, as I say, a little bit of the backstory. Then it rapidly ramps into the story where it's continuing Conan has gotten loose from prison. He's now going into the priest to kill, in the house to kill the red priest. He runs into Marilla while he's there. Uh, this does, though, start to delve into the story of the others that arrived. I guess it was in this one over here. Yeah. And the traps that he has throughout the house. The red priest has throughout the house. Uh, and it talks to how, you know, Basically, the scientist priest has really built this whole house to be a death trap. And these are the other rogues in the house. Hence, rogues in the house is the title. There's a picture of Thak right up there. And at the end of the day, you basically end up with a full issue, which is basically Conan just, you know, wrestling it out with Thak here. Uh, once they finally decide to get it on. And bingo, bango, bongo. There's your splash pages and away you go. Now, another thing that was quite interesting in this one, though, which kind of caught me off guard is... This one starts off with, and this is, and again, this must be building into the prior story to this particular subplot, where you've got a bunch of characters that haven't been introduced at all, have nothing to do with the story, and they are basically absconding with the Gunderman's body, and then they kill the guard who's guarding the Gunderman's body, who's still hanging in the middle of the town. And at the end of the day, Conan comes back after he's escaped, because he's like, oh, hey, you know what, I'll go get my Gunderman friend out of the noose. Well, he's already gone, and he rides off into the sunset. Little tweaks there that are slightly different than the original story. And that, 
adds a little bit of extra, except I don't know who these people are that were in the first part of this last four-part story. Uh, so I'm sure that has to do with more of the delving into the whole Dark Horse storyline, but eh, it, to me it didn't mean much, it was just nice filler. Okay, so of the two, which one I think stuck more true to the original story? Well, this missed the bad guys coming into the house uh, and showcasing really how conniving, Nobonius, the Red Priest is. Because it just shows Thak basically killing a leopard, uh, which was, I, I'm not going to lie, that was a little difficult to read. As a, as a guy who's got a pet cat, I, I don't know, I, I just had a hard time with it. Uh, so this one was good. This one was more actually more true to it. Both of them deviated in that they got into, I think, too much storyline of who's the priest, why the why did Jenna betray them, and that's part right there. Both of them did that, I, but I understand why. You're trying to delve the characters and draw them along. Which one is more true, though? Interestingly, in this one, the Dark Horse one is more true to the original story than the Marvel one. Uh, so good on you, Dark Horse. You really stuck with it. Which one of these did I enjoy more? Huh. I, I, that is a tricky one. I'm going to say the one that I actually enjoyed more is actually the Dark Horse one. And the reason why I like the Dark Horse one, you got 20 some odd pages per book. And when I went through these, I read all four of these in about 30 minutes. And I'm a slow reader. So that really shows you you're mostly going through picture, 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 picture. I enjoyed the pictorial story. I really did. I thought they did a great job in this. I liked all the written work in here. I love my Barry Winslow Smith stuff. But I think this one is one that I enjoyed more. Now, which of these do I think is going to appeal more to today's reader? You've got to remember, Robert E. Howard wrote this stuff almost 100 years ago now. Hmm. Well, today's reader, I think, would probably enjoy, as much as this is drawn out into a, a four-part story, they would enjoy this more. That's my thought process on it. This one, I think, gives you more of the actual story, which is interesting. It's closer to the Robert E. Howard stuff which is typically not what I think today's reader would go for. They'd be more about splash and pizzazz. But this one right here, I think, is actually the one that today's reader would like more, which is a shame. I love these stories. Uh, emotionally, I'm tied to them. But this is two for two now where I've said today's reader would probably enjoy them a little bit better. Yeah, interesting. Well, there you go, everybody. That's today's review. That's the side-by-side. -side. I hope you enjoyed this one, and we will see you in the next one.